everybody. Sunday, July 5th. Uh, we're going to go top dress some corn today. Uh, I got the fertilizer spreader here with uh, nitrogen in it. Uh, this isn't my spreader. This is just um, by the fertilizer and you can rent the spreader. This spreader is set up to fit 30 inch rows uh, and I've got the uh, 830 case with the green cab on it that we've got set for the 30 inch rows so we're not running the corn down. Uh, what I have in here for fertilizer is a mix of urea and AMS which is two different kinds of nitrogen and also some sulfur in the AMS. And then I have a product you can see it's kind of a bluish color. Uh, normally it would be white. Uh, that's called Factor Plus and what that does urea will evaporate really fast in hot weather like this without rain. So I put that on there and that gives you like two weeks I believe it is um, that it'll hold that nitrogen there without evaporating. So it costs a little extra but I think it's worth it. I mean if we get rain today I wouldn't need it but it's I didn't put it on last year and I kind of regretted it because I think I lost a lot because the rain we were supposed to get kind of vanished. So but today now I see there's just a storm that whoops I have my thumb in front of it. Today there was just a storm I just seen kind of going north of us with this hot weather they can pop up anywhere so and they're talking some rain kind of in the near future so hopefully we'll get some. I'm going to give you a little overview of how this thing works. I know there's probably a lot of you out there that know how these work but some don't. Um, it's got a power takeoff and then this one has uh, hydraulic lift to engage and disengage this. This is a chain that runs off the wheels just so when you stop the tractor this stops moving. Uh, and then like I said this is just ground driven it pulls the material to the back. Uh, this one's kind of nice because like I said this is on hydraulic lift. This little wheel is what drives that chain so you can raise and lower it instead of having a rope to pull. Uh, some of them are kind of a pain but this one works pretty nice. And then anyway in the back here you've got a spinner down below. It's driven by the power takeoff and then here's your chain out the back. Drops it down into there and spins it out and it's got a 50 foot spread on it so and then it's got a adjustment here on this door so depending on how much per acre you want to put down, uh, you can adjust it there. They've got measurements there and a chart here. So that's basically what that is. Like I said, it's all slanted so it runs down to the chain and it's got a tarp on it in case it rains, stuff like that. So um, that's just kind of the basic basic run over of it, how it works. They're pretty simple. Uh, they're kind of, this one is, the box is stainless so that's kind of nice because this fertilizer is really really corrosive to steel you can see on the back this is plain steel it's all rusty and stuff so these things are kind of high maintenance but they do a good job so anyway we're gonna run up and do that all right I wanted to kind of stop up on this hill here um, this corn here is probably average height of the field uh, I mean there's some of the spots that were that got more stressed from when it was dry that are shorter than this and there's some spots uh, in the better ground like down the hill further that are quite a bit taller but I mean I didn't come up here yesterday on the 4th but uh, it's hard to kind of get a view here but it's it's actually well over knee high so that's uh, that's really good it's actually got really good color um, this is the field that got the liquid manure on it so that obviously helps I noticed down in the very bottom of the hill down in there it's hard to see but um, normally that corn is really thick down there and there's a lot of spaces in there but I think that might be I think the culprit to that might be a sandhill crane because there was some of them living around here and they really like to pluck those plants out of the ground when they're when they're small when they still have the kernel on the bottom they pull the plant out and eat the kernel so I kind of think that's what happened down there because normally that's there's no rock or anything much down there it's pretty good so it usually covers real well and everything but but aside from that, um, no, this corn is actually looking, I'm very happy with it. It looks really good. And it looks like we got a pretty good kill on our weeds, too. Um, I did see there's a couple spots. I must have had a nozzle that was clogged on the sprayer that I didn't notice because you'll get little strips where there's a little bit of weed. But other than that, it uh, looks like it looks like it did pretty good. Um, you can see it on the side of the tractor there. Uh, come up a little closer. I mean the corn's up You know, it's up 
up to the up to the axle on the tractor and up over the hitch on there so oh I'm very happy with it so anyway I just wanted to stop on this hill because this is probably kind of a middle of the road uh, height patch on this field so anyway we'll get back to spreading See, I must have had a nozzle plugged on the sprayer. You can see this line. Uh, one thing with that sprayer, our old sprayer, the boom was in front of the tank, so you could see all the nozzles. This one, the booms run behind, so pretty much all I can see is the is the booms off to the sides. I can't see the one out the back, but but the corn's getting up high enough now that it'll be uh, it'll be all right. But it looks like it did a nice job. There's a spot here I was going to show you. Kind of the difference here's a spot where I turned spot I missed on the headland here um, kind of a big big difference you can see how you know you got your line right about here you know this is all dying and nice and and this is what it would look like across here so just kind of thought I'd show you that Maggie calved last night about 8 p.m. We gave her her calcium pills. This morning, Alan's dad found her. She was down. She kind of jammed herself up in the stall. And uh, so Alan has a piece of steel that he uses to put the cows on. So she went on that, and you just pull that out of the barn then. So we put her out here. She's got shade, and she's not in the heat. Um, we took her temperature. Her temperature was 102.1. So... We weren't really sure if it was a milk fever or not because that temperature is pretty good. But uh, called the vet. The vet said that with the heat and humidity, that might have masked the temperature. Because their temperature with milk fever runs lower. Runs lower. 
um, she suggested that she might be low on phosphorus and it's really difficult now to get phosphorus for cows so she recommended that we do a calcium treatment but she suggested I go to the human pharmacy and get an enema treatment. I guess the enemas are, they have two different kinds of phosphorus in there. So I had to go get a couple of bottles of enema solution. So we put that right into the IV here. I've got it in her vein, right in the neck. I hold it low. The vet just told us that when I, when he taught me how to IV them, said hold it low. It takes longer, but you don't have to risk them having a heart attack or anything because it's not coming too fast. Um, and then tomorrow we'll give her that other bottle of enema solution just orally so hopefully that'll clear it up because she seems more like she's low on phosphorus than it's a hypocalcemia thing but yeah so then if i just want to check to make sure it's still in the vein just drop the bottle down lower and you can see it i like this tubing better than the stuff you get like at the feed store that's like a yellow rubber this is so much nicer to see through. And then, if she does get up, then we'll check her for ketosis too, because she's a little on the fatter side. No offense. Can you give it a shot? Okay. You feel better? Okay. You try and get it for me? You doing hard? I'll probably leave her sit a little and let that work too. Yeah. Here is actually the sheet of steel that we used to get her out of the barn. Uh, my grandpa picked this up at an auction, I think, years ago. It's actually a panel out of a harvester silo, and it works really nice for that. Uh, the only thing I need to do, uh, luckily my dad had a couple of, of uh, clips in the truck that worked. They were kind of light, but they did hold, but I need to get a couple of clevises to put in there to hook the chain to a little bit better. But um, no, it actually worked really well. Another thing we did use this for when we swapped our bulk tank, it worked really well for that too. There, we tried her one more time and she got up. Now she's probably going to take off on us because she's not in the barn. Um, should we try to get her out in the pasture? Alright, if you want to push her along, I'll go with the gates.